I've heard you make the connection between mitochondrial health mm-hmm. and autism. What are mitochondria and what is the connection between mitochondrial health and, and yeah. this condition? So, you know, mitochondria, the role of mitochondria in many different brain conditions is increasingly being understood, including dementia. Um, but for autism, it was really just in the past two decades that some research began to show very high rates of what we call mitochondrial dysfunction in autism. So mitochondria are tiny structures inside of cells that are really at the heart of metabolism. So they're important for converting nutrients into energy in the form of ATP, um, and they're involved in lots and lots of other aspects of um, the body's biochemistry. Um, But when mitochondria aren't functioning well, it can really um, get in the way of proper brain and body function, and especially brain development. Um, different parts of the body have different energy requirements. The brain is hugely um, is a huge in huge need of energy, and especially at certain times of life, like um, the first few years of life when the brain is growing and changing rapidly um, through puberty, for example. And um, and so there are now many studies showing, uh, looking both at uh, blood markers, tissue markers. Um, some of my research using brain imaging to look directly at brain tissue has shown that um, mitochondrial dysfunction is part of autism. Um, Perhaps not for all, but for a a very large percentage. Wow. Yeah, Yeah. prior to your work, correct me if I'm wrong, but they they were primarily using blood markers, right? That's right, that's right. Mainly blood markers, um, which are a a good biomarker. Like a surrogate. Um, Yes, yes. Um, But we know that mitochondria in different parts of the body can be functioning differently. So in one part of the body, they may be functioning perfectly fine and another not. So it's it's good to get as direct um, a test as possible for the organ and tissue that you're interested in, in this case, the brain. Wow. So how do you then measure mitochondrial function in the brain? Yeah. So um, the tool that we used in the research that I've done um, is using brain magnetic resonance spectroscopy. So it's a form of brain MRI, so brain imaging. Um, but it's a unique uh, approach to brain imaging that allows us to measure different chemical levels, uh, metabolites, and especially for mitochondrial function, the level of lactate um, in brain tissue as a as a biomarker for how well mitochondria are doing. Interesting. Lactate yeah. is built up like in our muscles, right? That's when right. We're, when we're exercising. Yeah, yeah, and it builds up in the brain too. Mm-hmm. And isn't it? Isn't it? Can, haven't we recently discovered that the brain can use it as a as a fuel source? Actually. It can, yes, uh, like other parts of the body, yes. Um, but it's um, not ideal and for long-term use. Mm. Um, and then when it's elevated, it is a sign of mitochondria um, stress and dysfunction. Wow. Yeah. So then in, so kids with, with autism then, mm-hmm. you're seeing what, reduced me- metabolism? Yes, so higher levels of lactate, reduced uh basically reduced function. Some, some, some p- part on the pathway of mitochondria metabolism is disrupted. Wow. Yeah. And are we, do we think that it's like, it's due to some kind of toxic exposure that essentially poisons the mitochondria? Well, mitochondria are very sensitive. So they're susceptible to um, lots and lots of different stressors. I, I like to think of them as stressors, but mm. they can come in lots of different forms. So certainly, yes, some toxins. Um, in our environment, even some medications can harm mitochondria. Um, inflammation, so anything that increases inflammation in the body can then adversely affect mitochondrial function. Um, states of chronic stress, um, oxidative stress. Uh, so there are lots of ways, um, yeah, lots of ways that mitochondria might end up taking a hit. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. Stress. Yeah, stress is a major mm-hmm. is a major killer. So how do, how do we then... Um, how do we prevent mitochondrial dysfunction? But if one is already suffering from a condition associated mm-hmm. with mitochondrial dysfunction, how do we improve yeah. the health of our mitochondria? Well, what's so interesting is um, that the, the, the kinds of lifestyle factors that improve health really for all people related to nutrition and exercise um, do so because they benefit mitochondrial function, they help reduce inflammation and, and chronic stress states. And the same is true for children and for autism. So um, interestingly, some of the, um, the best research in autism has looked at the effects of exercise. Hmm. And we know exercise has just tremendous benefits, right, to, to body, brain and body health. And the research shows that exercise improves social abilities, communication, language, executive function, 
uh, emotion regulation, um, and overall quality of life in autism. So it really is an underutilized intervention that could, can have tremendous benefits. Hmm. Fascinating. And I've also heard you talk about certain nutrients, like specific micronutrients. Yes. That can yes, play a role. Yes. So when you think about nutrition supplementation, so it's one of the main categories. There are, in my view, six main ways of kind of approaching and supporting autism. The first relates to lifestyle factors like exercise, but also improving sleep and um, those, those types of um, interventions. The next relates to nutritional supplements. Um, and my approach is really first to, to do um, the, the type of blood and urine testing, stool testing as well, that can give us insight into a child's biology. Because if there are nutritional deficiencies present, the first step in supplementation is to correct those. Hmm. Um, so for example, iron deficiency, a vitamin D deficiency, B12, and there are many others. Um, even beyond that, there are a lot of nutritional supplements that can help. Um, for example, for mitochondrial function, we know L-carnitine, creatine, uh, many of the B vitamins, vitamin C and E. They're just, there's a role for many different um, supplements to enhance mitochondrial function. Um, and then there are some supplements that can help specific, very specific symptoms, like um, for sleep disturbance, which is very common. About 80% of, of autistic children will experience sleep disturbance at some point. Um, and that can really get in the way, you know, sleep, essential for brain development. Um, and so melatonin, magnesium, even some um, cannabis-related products like cannabidiol, um, there's just a, a whole host of different nutritional supplements that can potentially help sleep and therefore help brain function. Is there not some concern uh, surrounding the use of melatonin in the, in the pediatric setting? There is. So um, the worry is that long-term use of melatonin might suppress a person's endogenous or internal production of melatonin. Um, and that's something important to keep in mind. So we try to use it short-term if possible and use it while we're putting in place other measures like sleep hygiene measures, like increasing light exposure, increasing exercise, um, uh, reducing simple carbohydrates in the diet, for example. Um, but we also know that for some children, um, their bodies, no matter whether they're on melatonin or not, their body's not producing enough. Hmm. Um, and so for them, long-term use may actually be the right answer. So it really depends on the child. This is so interesting. I mean, for anybody listening who has a loved one with autism, but also, I mean, across the, across the, the lifespan, I mean, these are all things that I think are broadly applicable yes. to anybody with a brain. That's right. That's right. And for the longest time, I've just 20 or 30 years ago, if you asked a doctor, could dietary changes help a child with autism? They would have said, you know, overwhelmingly have said no, because it was almost unthinkable that a brain condition that was viewed largely as genetic and largely as being static and unchanging could somehow benefit from improved nutrition. But now we know better. Hmm. We know that it's incredibly important. And even in my view, it's, if you have a neurodevelopmental condition, even more important that nutrition will make and even have potentially even more benefits um, wow. to health. Hey, if you like that video, you need to check out this one here and I'll see you there.